indulging in a spot of vanity. Handsome devil, aren't I? Be that as it may. Ceramorphosis. What does it make you think of? Spot on. Day one, fever and memory loss. Day two, hallucinations and graying skin. Day three, hair loss and blood leaking from all orifices. Need to go on? Day four, excruciating pain as the skeleton and organs reform and reposition. Day five, the host personality has disappeared. Fingers and toes and limbs elongate. I take it you get the picture? Day six, the flesh around the mouth splits to make way for tentacles. Day seven, a mind flayer is born. This is the annotated version, of course. Spot on again. Our orifices remain blissfully unblooded, our heads remain clear, and our blood temperature normal. Any expert will agree this is abnormal. That, alas, is where my knowledge fails me. A rogue might call it luck, a priest might call it fate. As for myself, I'm a pragmatic. I see the silence before the storm. Something to sleep on. We should get some rest. Ah, there you are. How did you enjoy my dear stew this evening? It's an old family recipe. Good. I tend to season it with spices from Karatur, but given what's available to us, good old Rosemary had to see us through. Not that I mean to regale you with my culinary exploits. There's, uh, well, there's actually something quite different I'd like to discuss. We've been traveling together for a while now, and during those travels, I've been observing you. I want you to know that I like what I see. The way you diffuse the tension between Zevlor and Aradin. The way you got Korga to release the girl. In short, I've grown to trust you. Now I need you to place your trust in me. Our journey together is bound to last a while still. As such, I feel compelled to speak. I say this because there's something I desperately need. But while I'll tell you what that something is, I won't tell you why. I have to ask you to agree to this before carrying on this conversation. Thank you. I see I did well to trust you. Now, to the matter at hand. You see, I have a condition. A condition different from the tadpole, but just as deadly. The only way to appease said condition is for me to take powerful magical artifacts and absorb the weave inside. It's been days since I last consumed an artifact before we were abducted. It is time, and by that I mean it's imperative, that I find and consume powerful strands of weave at the earliest possible juncture. Catastrophe. As luck would have it, Faerun is full of them, though I do feel obliged to point out that items of power tend to be in the hands of the powerful. There'll be danger involved, or great cost. Good. A bit of boldness will serve us well. I know the allure these artifacts hold. I understand their value and their power. All this to say, I understand the sacrifice I ask of you. I hope I can count on you. Oh. My, you startled me. I, uh... It's miles away. Of course, of course. I was just practicing an incantation.
she does. She's... She's Mistra. Can't quite describe it. The need I sometimes feel to see her to draw the filaments of fantasy into existence. No sculpture or painting could ever do her justice. Only the fabric that she herself is and embodies. The weave. Mistra is all magic. And as far as I'm concerned, she is all creation. Magic is my life. I've been in touch with the weave for as long as I can remember. There's nothing like it. It's like music, poetry, physical beauty, all rolled into one and given expression through the senses. Is it the same for you? Perhaps we can share the experience by reaching into the weave together. and follow my lead. Now you. familiar feeling, like a kind word and a kind touch at the same time. It's warm and comfortable. Excellent. Now, repeat after me. Athran Mistra Ril Kantrak Eo. Kantrak Eo. Ah, yes. The scent of rose water and a sense of well-being. A sliver of weave that tastes sweet on the tongue. Very good. Now, I want you to picture in your mind the concept of harmony. As true as you can. You see, or is it sense, the unmistakable presence of Mistra, the Lady of Mysteries. There's something like the anticipation of a kiss, then the pleasure of being cloaked in peace. You are safe. You are nestled in the cup of Mistra's hand. Look at that. We're channeling the weave. How does it feel? That it does. The weave connects you. The moment feels intimate. You realize the weave is making you one. You have but to imagine your desire, and Gale will know it. I... I didn't think... You perceive quick-fire gusts of embarrassment trepidation, and finally, elation. Sorry, I wasn't expecting, but it is a pleasant image, to be sure. Most pleasant, in fact. Most welcome. The weave evaporates, and as it does so, you realize the night feels suddenly cold and lonesome. Oh. There it goes. How easily things slip away from us. No matter how hard they were in the obtaining. Good night. I enjoyed sharing a moment of magic with you. How can I help? Oh, I was surprised. But pleasantly so. Just like I said. Amid the madness that has befallen us, it seems almost out of place to think of a kiss. And yet, now more than ever, it's important to recall what makes us human. Well, you know what I mean. A stolen glance, that sudden heartbeat. Sometimes the little things are worth more than kingdoms. 
They promise things to come. I've had a pupil or two, but never for very long. Their ineptitudes tend to... irk me. You do seem to be a precocious talent, though. I can always tell when I meet a keen mind, receptive to Mistra. Keep it up, and she might just take a personal interest in you one of these days. Happiness is like a stray cat. Sometimes it seeks you out, sometimes it ignores you. Tonight I'm ignored. It's getting late. I think I'll turn in. Perhaps some sleep will do me good. A bygone spell from a bygone age. It doesn't matter. Please. Just let it rest. Very well. Just now I was trying to cast a spell I once cast with ease. But I failed. You see, this fire. There was a time that I could make it come alive. That it would take the shape of a dragon and roar in delight. There was a time I could silence a beholder with a word and lift a tower from its foundations with a flourish. There was a time I was all but one with the weave. But no more. A mere shadow of the wizard I used to be. Why? Because I've lost. I was. Until I lost. I've lost Mistra. I sought to impress her personally, to turn the eyes of my muse upon me, to win favor of a goddess, but I failed. And all I invoked was death and dismissal. My death, her dismissal. Thank you. You're a good friend. I often think of that moment we shared together. One under the weave. I hope you think about it too. Go ahead. I'm listening. The weave is still here. All around us. Inside of us too. As long as the goddess lives, magic is a tangible thing for those who know how to touch. I've studied magic for many years, and in as many ways I am still a more than capable wizard. It's just that I am no longer able to perform those feats even arch wizards would marvel at. To have one hand on the pulse of divinity. You have to remember that the weave is a living thing, both the embodiment and the extension of Mistra herself. She can give, and she can take away. I'm afraid I'm still very much on her naughty list. Consider yourself lucky you're not. Do you? So do I. You see, I'm not a big believer in fate, but I do believe in serendipity. Life is a tempest of events that sometimes we brace against and sometimes embrace. You're one such event that, one day soon perhaps, I'd like to embrace. Thank you. There's that confidence I like. I thank you for seeking me out. Amidst all this merriment, I wasn't sure we'd have a chance to speak this evening. I wasn't sure we'd have a chance to make merry. Just the two of us. We shared a romantic moment of the mind while cloaked in the weave, didn't we? And I seem to recall a fond allusion to that moment afterwards. Allow me to make the following proposition. There's a book that circulates in Orm, detailing the first thousand nights of a newlywed king and queen. 
They turned everything they did into an art. The art of conversation. The art of taste. Time honored and newly acquired. The art of the body. The exploration and acceptance of the self and the other. The art of the night itself. I say we take a page from their book. I'm many things, but Coy's not one of them. What do you say? That's because I'm full of delights. We'll let the night run its course, and when everything is quieting down, safe in the arms of sleep, I'll come by to find safety in yours. I love this time of night. It's almost the reverent silence that accompanies the peak of darkness. And you'd almost believe the dawn will never break. You understand it then? The timelessness of lovers. That most beautiful of fantasies. More beautiful than this. There we have it. Beauty. I'm of the opinion one should try and excel at everything. How about we move on to everything? Good morning. Looks like the dawn broke after all. So much for the timelessness of lovers. It's all right. You look even more beautiful in the light. I'm sure I do. I know we have to get moving again soon, but before we part, I'd like to tell you something. I'd like to tell you a story. I hope it will be lovely still by the time we reach the end. It's a story full of answers long overdue. It is the story of a man who fell in love with a goddess. Thank you. Once upon a time, not quite that long ago, there lived a wizard in a tower. The wizard was what one might call a prodigy, who from an early age could not only control the weave, but compose it like a musician or a poet. Such was his skill that it earned him the attention of the mother of magic herself, the Lady of Mysteries, Mistra. Love. Perhaps it was not quite love, but you see, the wizard was but a very young man. It was most certainly love to him. Mistra showed him the secrets beneath the veils, the gossamer veils first, draped across the weave, the delicate veils next draped across her body. Chosen one, she whispered, and she slipped them off completely. Yes, until one day, all too soon, the whispers stopped. The goddess spurned the mortal. The veils were drawn once more, and the wizard was left behind, heartbroken. Like so many of the heartbroken, he did something infinitely foolish. One has to think big if one seeks to win back a goddess. So the wizard thought big. In a word? Yes. Here goes. Once upon a time, very long ago, a mighty lord lived in a tower. A flying tower, to be precise. I'll save his story for another time, but the gist of it is that he sought to usurp the goddess of magic so that he could become a god himself. 
He almost managed, but not quite. And his entire empire, Netheril, came crashing down around him as he turned to stone. The magic unleashed that day was phenomenal. Rolling like the prime chaos that outdates creation, a fragment of it was caught and sealed away in a book. No ordinary book, mind you. A tome of gateways that contained within it a bubble of astral plane. It was a fragment of primal weave locked out of time. Locked away from Mistra herself. What if, the silly wizard thought, what if after all this time I could return this lost part of herself to the goddess? The answer was to try, and the outcome was to fail. Here. Place your hand over my heart. Let me show you. You feel the tadpole quiver as you realize Gale is letting you in, into the dark. You see through Gale's eyes, staring down the corridors of a dread memory. A book bound, then suddenly opened. Inside, there are no pages, only a swirling mass of blackest weave that pounces. Its teeth, its claws, it's unstoppable as it digs through you and becomes part of you. And gods, is it ever hungry. Of all things, magic. This netherese taint, this orb, for lack of a better word, is balled up inside my chest. And it needs to be fed. As long as it absorbs weave, it remains stable, to an extent. The moment it becomes unstable, however, it will erupt. I don't know the exact magnitude of the eruption, but given my studies of Netherese magic, I'd say even a fragment as small as the one I carry, it would level a city the size of Waterdeep. It is my truth, finally revealed. It is this folly that led Mistra to abandon me completely. I can only hope that you won't abandon me as well. After all we've been through. After the night we spent together. Surely we can brave even this side by side. That is... a great relief. Oh, a great relief indeed. I don't know what I did to deserve the magic that you do. Many challenges lie ahead, but in this moment, I believe nothing to be insurmountable. The road awaits. Shall we? Or do you have questions for me? You don't. And a great compliment that is, too. You are unique in your own right, and just as incomparable. The orb was kept safe and inert in a pocket of astral planes suspended in time. If I can somehow manage to expel it from my body while in the astral plane, it will be rendered inert again. Alternatively, I could learn to control its chaotic magic. That is, to succeed where I failed before. But without Mistress' favor, I don't see how that may come to pass. Of course, there could be different answers as well. Faerun brims with more magic than any one wizard could fathom, let alone comprehend. Who knows what outlandish solutions may yet present themselves. I'll be honest with you. I don't know. She's my muse still, the embodiment of magic. But the embodiment of love? Only if we ever meet again will I know. Here's to us, and to brand new adventures.